So welcome. I'm Kathy Heller. It is so nice to meet you. This is Colleen and she is so important in my life. She is VIP. She is my integrator. She runs my team. She helps me create content. I just adore her. She has so much humility. She's brilliant. She has a PhD. I mean, all the things. And she looks this good all the time. This is the truth. All right. So the two of us this week, drum roll, please. We are going to take you through how to make the most buzzworthy, awesome, meaningful thing called a podcast in your life. My mom is even in the group. Give it up for my mom because she is in this group. God bless my mom, really. I mean, she gave me the gift of being able to talk to anyone, really, which is what this whole podcast course should be about. So thank you, mom, for that. Um, we are going to go over. Let me just tell you what's going to happen. You know, it's always nice to be told sort of where we're headed, what's happening, what what, what's happening here? Okay, so let me be your Disney tour guide for a second. So welcome. So today we're going to talk about how to get started. We're going to talk about how to pick a topic. We're going to talk about some gear. We're going to talk about some of the basics to get you going. Tomorrow, you're going to come on back and we're going to talk about how to build an audience, right? Because if you build this thing, you take the time to put this out there, you want people to come. You want people to listen and you want to engage with people because Everything in life is people, right? Business is people. Sales is not numbers. Sales is people. Everything is people. We're going to talk about that. And then on the third day, we're going to talk about monetizing. We're going to talk about, oh my goodness, how could you actually build a business? Like I'm talking a crazy, scalable, thriving business with a podcast. We're going to talk about that on Wednesday. But then guess what? We have two extra days for you. On Thursday, I'm coming back with two very good friends who both have podcasts and they're going to talk a little bit about their perspective and what it's done for their lives and their business. And I think that's going to be juicy. And then on Friday, not only will I be back here, but some of you will have the opportunity. It'll just be first come first serve to actually join us on zoom, but then we'll still stream that zoom into the group. And I'll be able to give this sort of more intimate experience. So it's a whole week, my friends, it's a whole week. She's showing up all week. So every single day, it's going to be 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, right here. Thank you very much. Tip your waitresses. So, so let's get started. Okay. So here's what I want to say to you. I want to say to you that I started this podcast. It's, it's almost, it's four and a half years ago. Okay. January, 2017 was Kathy Heller's very first podcast episode out in the world. And I want you guys to hear this because it's the truth. And I think it's so darn inspirational. I really, really do. So I started my podcast. I had three little girls, still do. And at the time, my youngest was 10 days old and my oldest was four and a half. And I started the podcast because, you know, something about having a baby makes you feel that you really can do hard things. Is this true? Type a one in the chat if you've ever had a child or you've done something that was beyond what you thought you could do and you did it. And Colleen, I don't know if, if you know this, but with my third, with Maddie, I couldn't have the epidural. There was some complication, so they turned the epidural. They, they told me, no, no, no. And I was in a lot of pain, right? But I did it. And she was so cute. But it was, it was a thing. Like I was the woman in the movie going, oh my God, right? But there was something about that that I felt a, a, a private kind of satisfaction with me that I was able to lead in and show up, okay, in that moment. And I had always wanted. I had always wanted to be the girl that said what I actually wanted to say. And I've always, since I was like five or six years old, wanted to lead my peer group. I've always wanted to be somebody who would inspire other people. But you know how sometimes, and type a one in the chat if you can relate, you hesitate to do that. Or you're worried about checking the temperature of how everyone feels in the room before you would ever say this is how I feel, or this is what's my opinion. And I think I have to say that women tend to do that more than men, where we like apologize a little bit too much, or we want to be nice and we want to be good and we want to be sweet. So we don't actually step into our strength. But I do have to say there was something about having Maddie where 
even having a third kid, like a third, all this stuff, I was like, there's something that feels stronger. And a friend said to me, Kath, you should start, you should start a podcast. And I thought, I get no sleep right now in breastfeeding. I'm so anxious. I've got kids crawling all over me. I also had a job at the time still. I was like, how am I going to fit this in? No, no. But you know, when you have that voice inside you, that's like, "Mm, yes, like you're playing small. Like, let's have a little conversation here. Yourself kind of knows the truth, but you're too afraid to admit the truth to yourself. So I tell my husband, what if I start a podcast? And he's like, you know what? I'll help. If you start a podcast, you know, maybe I can take some of the night feedings. What can we give it up for my husband? I think that was extremely kind of him to help me, but not all the night feedings, right? So there was still like, I would maybe get like a three hour stretch of sleep, but make no mistake. I was really, really busy and didn't have help in the house or extra funds or anything like that. So you guys, I decided I'm starting a podcast. And guess what? Everything I just said to you basically fell apart because when I asked him to take the three girls out to the park so that I could just record for an hour in my closet, well, that turned into eight hours of me sweating, throat so tight. Why? Because I recorded this first episode and then I was like, oh, shoot, that sounded dumb. I didn't record this right. So I recorded it again. And I was like, hi, this is Kathy Heller and I'm doing this podcast. And then I was like, you sound weird. Do it again. Do it again. So I re-recorded it eight times. Who can understand that feeling of like, I hate the way I sound. I hate the way I sound. Or I, how come I said this when I just recorded it, but this time I didn't say that. I mean, it was just the self-doubt was so palpable. It was it was like crushing me. It was literally crushing. And so he comes back from the park and he's like, can I, we find, he's texting me, can we finally come back? And I'm like, he's like, why did that take so many hours? I'm like, I'm not doing this show. I've actually decided I'm not doing it. It's too hard. It's crazy. I'm not doing it. And he's like, oh my God. I mean, you just had us out all that. Fine. And I have this friend, Emma, who's now, she now works for me, but at the time she was somebody that I knew who was kind of just starting to like, she was maybe going to help me a little bit as like an intern. I go, Emma, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. She's like, you sure about that? I'm like, yeah, it's too hard. And I wake up the next day and my throat, guess what? For the first time in my life, Polly and I had laryngitis. I couldn't even talk Oh my gosh. because of the, you know what it is? It's emotional. Like when we sometimes get a, a pain physically, there's something that correlates that's like coming from here. And it was me stopping myself, making it so much harder. And I would do have to say to you, and this is not even in your, in your notes yet, by the way, we made you workbooks. So we'll send you after in case you're not taking all the notes, we'll send you the notes. And this isn't even in your workbook, but I will tell you something that's such a beautiful gift for you. It gets to be easier than we make it. We are convinced that things have to be hard, that in order for something to be successful, it has to be hard. So you guys, long story short, I decided, yeah, I can't do a podcast if I make it this difficult and I'm so critical, but what if I just let it be and I put it out there? And can I tell you something? I did not, you can check, you can go back and scroll. I didn't have an Instagram account. I wasn't famous. I didn't have a best-selling book. My last name's not Kardashian. I don't know anyone cool, right? It was just a mom. 37, I was 37 at the time, started the podcast. Do you know that now it's been four and a half years, we've grown to over 24 million downloads. The podcast has brought in multi seven figures. We're going to hit eight figures this year. I'm now writing my second book. I'm starting to tape a TV show this week, Colleen, and I'm 42 years old and I never wore my retainer and I didn't get straight A's and I have three little kids and no, I don't have the flattest belly and I just want to hear it for this is possible. And we're going to talk this week about all of the reasons that it did go viral and it did work. And it wasn't because I started out with the most famous guests. And it wasn't because I was a PhD expert in the topic. And it wasn't because I was somebody that already had all this authority and credibility. We're going to talk about what was it? How did I do that? And how has it completely changed my life? 
It's retired my husband. My husband was a lawyer. My husband is no longer a lawyer. Do you know what he's doing right now? He's writing stand up comedy. His father passed away when he was 13 years old. His father never got to do anything other than live in a job that was just survival. And then he died very young. I said to my husband, This is such a gift. I said, Maybe he's up there helping this all come together. But you get to opt out of the rat race now. This is is so special, so special. We both tear up, right? And I come from my mom who's here. My mom and I lived in an apartment. My mom was a single mom. My childhood was not like this easy street, right? And I barely graduated from high school. And anyone who was in high school with me kind of knows that story. The, the point is, my friends, there are endless possibilities right here for you right now. And sometimes it's just a matter of somebody coming along. Hopefully today gets to be me. I get to be that person for you today, but hopefully it happens for you all the time. Hopefully somebody comes along sometimes and says, there is a higher branch that you get to reach for. And you don't have to have a certain credential next to your name. And you don't have to be a certain type of person. You could be a 37 year old mom with three kids and maybe your voice matters. And I have to say before we even get started, do you know that when I started podcasting, I want you to tell me in the chat, how much percent, what was the percentage of podcast hosts that were women? Does anyone want to guess what the percentage was out of a hundred percent, right? That's what we have to work with. What percentage out of a hundred percent do you think were female podcasts hosted, hosted by women? How many, what percentage, you know, we make up half the population in the world. So what do you think it would be? So I'm seeing some guesses here. What do you think is, what do you think is the number? So the number is, sadly, the number is 12%. 12%, Colleen. 12%, okay? That is not okay. When, it, when, when I started, there were 12% of all podcasts hosted by women, women right? We, we need to have our voices in the world. Now it's up to a whopping 26%. Guys, I think we can do better, okay? I think that every single person deserves to be heard. And you know what Mr. Rogers told me? Yeah, he was pretty, pretty awesome. He said, there is no one who would tell their story who then wouldn't be loved by somebody else. Do you know what happens when you tell your story? People, people reach their arms out for you. There is something about telling stories that changes the world. So everybody, let's get into it. Who's excited? That's my story. I'm excited to start. So let's begin. Let's begin. So we made you workbooks. We're going to send you them after, and they're filled with lots of information and things like that. But let's get started with why a podcast Let's talk about why a podcast, okay? So we're gonna talk right now about authority, okay? Now we're getting into the juice. If you wanna take notes, you can, but we, we made you workbooks. So here we go. We have to understand that there was a time where if you wanted to have authority or credibility in the world, you needed someone else's permission. What do I mean? Well, you needed someone to give you a book deal. You needed someone to give you a talk show like Phil Donahue or whatever it is. What about now? You can say to someone, yeah, I really love vegan food or yeah, I'm really passionate about, you know, parents and mindfulness for kids. Okay, cool. But, oh, I actually have a podcast on that. Oh, she has a podcast on that. Now, what do people think? Wow. She's kind of like gotten a real opinion about it. She's put it out in the world and having a podcast gives you a sense of authority. And you don't need someone to give you permission to tell you that you're worthy of authority. You can just start a podcast, can't you? You don't have to have someone tell you whether you can or not. Why else a podcast? Well, podcasting, and I want you to really get this, podcasting creates, write this word down. If you write one word down after the end of today, write this word down, intimacy. Okay, what the world is lacking is empathy. Okay, what we really, really need desperately, we have like an empathy deficit in the world. But what makes anything work, any kind of relationship, any business, anything that you think would like, what makes a sale good or not? How do sales actually feel like good sales and not sleazy sales? The way anything works well, 
relationship of any kind is through intimacy. Podcasting creates intimacy and connection, which is powerful on so many levels. Podcasts have a wide appeal and are easily available on platforms throughout the world. It's so much less intimidating for you to do a podcast than a live video because again, yes, I happen to look extra today, but if I don't look extra, I could just record, which I do often, and I don't have to feel self-conscious because I can just record. Also, you can start a podcast without being famous. Let's talk for a second about podcasting and the intimacy factor. So you know at this point, right? Because we're all we all have a phone, right? So we all scroll around. There's a lot of different platforms where people put media in the world, right? There's YouTube, right? There's TikTok, there's Instagram. People have email lists and they send you things. There's all different ways that people connect. Why do you think, let me see some guesses, that podcasting might create more intimacy than YouTube or emails or anything else? What do you think it is about podcasting that might be more conducive to creating intimacy? I'm going to give you a second to think about that. What is it about podcasting? Okay, so I'm seeing some guesses here. Right. It's right in your ears, Teresa just said. It's conversational in nature, Rachel just said, because you're focused on listening. Yeah. Yeah. Those are all really good answers. So I'll tell you, when you are listening to a podcast, you're right. You put these little earphones, right? You put these like right into your ears. And if you look into the data, it's really interesting. The consumer, the person who listens to a podcast tends to be listening and self-selecting that they want to listen for a longer period of time. Whereas on YouTube, you might be checking something, looking for something, but you're, you're kind of multitasking. You have a lot of tabs open and you might not really be focused in, in the same way. Also, how many times have you gone to YouTube and you've typed in like, how do I put on eyeliner? Or how do I build this table from Ikea? And you've gone to YouTube videos, but tell me, is it true or not that there have been times you've gone to YouTube, but you can't tell me who the person was, who the YouTuber was. You just remember the video, right? With a podcast, people tend to feel like, I know this person. This person is with me on my commute to work every single day. This person is with me when I'm on the elliptical every single day. This person and me have a connection, right? So there's an intimacy there. And when people are watching on YouTube, do you know that to keep their attention for like four or five minutes is like a Herculean, whereas with a podcast, people are listening longer. Colleen, do you want to say anything about why podcasting we were just talking about or anything about this intimacy before we move into this next piece? Yeah, it's just this sense. I feel like it's almost like a quality that feels like friendship, right? And so when we think of the people in our lives, there's there's, there's a closeness and like a vulnerability that we have when we hear from people who we love and we care about. And so I almost feel like when we listen to podcasts, there's a level on which we as well as like a listener, right? So anyone who's listening to your podcast, they can also experience and hear your message and sort of take it in and integrate it on a whole other level because they're opening up to it more right? Like Kathy says, not all the multitasking, not all of this, not all of that. They're dropped in and they're right there. And that's really powerful. It's really powerful. And I want to tell you guys some other pieces about podcasting versus YouTube, which you can start to see where there is more that you can create here. So uh, let's do some guesses because it's kind of fun. What do you think is the total amount of videos that exists on YouTube. Who wants to take a guess? Who wants to take a guess? Let's see who can guess the closest. I feel like we're like at a, a carnival and I'm like going <laughs> to give you a goldfish. And those goldfish, it's so sad. They never live, Colleen. They die. Oh, it's very oh. sad. I'm going to start a whole podcast for those goldfish. <laughs> so what do you think is the total amount of videos on YouTube? Who's going to know the answer? Total amount of videos, total on YouTube, on the platform. Lots of good guesses. 100 billion, 102 billion, 120 billion, 
Ooh, 20 trillion, 500 million. Okay, this is interesting, right? Because a lot of people are, are voting sort of for in the millions, even hundreds of millions. You guys ready for this? Y'all ready for this? You guys ready? It's 149 billion. Dr. Evil, B with the B, with the B, 149 billion total videos on YouTube. What the heck? It's insane, right? And people say to me, how come you don't start a YouTube? I'm like, um, have you seen the ocean? Cause it's giant and I want to be able to make a difference. Okay. How many total podcast episodes are there? Do you think? So we just talked about total, well, this is like apples to apples. We just said there's 149 billion with a B, Bruno Mars. I want to be a billionaire. So freaking bad. What up, Oprah? Okay. 149 billion total videos on YouTube. So what do you think is the equivalent? How many total episodes of podcasts do you think there are? Hit me up. Hit me up. Hit me up. What's happening with me right now? I was so normal and now I've gone off the rails. It's fine. This is what happens. Let's deal with it. Deal with it. By the way, I don't even do this so much on my podcast. You know, <laughs> Colleen, I keep it so like, this is my meaningful time. This is like my NPR voice. No, I don't do that. But I'm saying like, I kind of want to be able to be crazy too on the podcast. You guys bring it out. The live energy is so good. So how many total episodes, Colleen, are they voting for? A hundred thousand. Yep. Hundreds of thousands, a million. Okay, some, okay. So the answer is 48 million total episodes. So 48 million, this is easy. I'm, I'm terrible at math. Like I have a fourth grader. She's like, what do you think about the fraction? And what do I do? I'm like, no, I have, I have nothing. I have zero, Colleen. I have nothing for her. But I'm smart enough to know that 149 billion is much greater than, I'm using that's even sophisticated enough to say greater than, it's greater than 48 million. And by the way, it's a then, not a then, T-H-A-N. Let's do a grammar lesson because my husband's like, you can't even spell words, it's then. I'm like, thank you so much. So 48 million to 149 billion. Now, how about this? How many podcasts do you think exist versus how many YouTube channels. Anyone know? Well, you know where it's, you know, I'm leading the witness here. There's 2 million podcasts, period, end of story. There's 37 million YouTube channels. Hmm. Now here's something you're going to want to write down that's going to give you hope in your heart. Are you ready for this? If your podcast episodes get more than 124 downloads, I didn't say 124,000, I didn't say 12,000, write this down. If your episode that you released got more than 124 downloads a month, do you know that you would be in the top 50% of podcasts? Do you think that you could accomplish that? The answer is yes. Let's just type the word yes. It feels so good to say yes. Type the word yes in all caps. Do you think that you could ever possibly in the span of a month have 124 human beings download something, listen to something you put out there? The answer is, oh yes, you can. So we're gonna talk about where is this going? Podcasting is easy for people also, by the way, when they're listening, they can multitask. I just said that is more inviting for people. They can be driving, they can be doing dishes, but they can be listening. You really can't be watching a YouTube video when you're driving or else you're a danger to yourself and other people. Okay. All right. Just as an FYI, uh, but podcasts you could be doing while you're driving. Why else do people listen to podcasts? Because they want to be learning things. They want to be entertained. They want companionship. They want to be inspired. So think about that for a second too, because now we're going to move into topics and what kinds of examples you, you're going to want to see for what kinds of podcasts you could start. Because I know a lot of you came in here thinking, I want to start a podcast, but like, how do I know what to talk about? Let's, let's get into that. Okay. So there are reasons people listen to podcasts beyond just, I want to learn from an expert. And I think a lot of times we get pigeonholed like, oh, well, I don't have a degree in sociology, so I can't start a podcast. Like, what are you talking about, right? Like the data shows that people listen to podcasts for a myriad of reasons, including relaxing, hanging out, learning, companionship, entertainment, 
being inspired, right? So think about that for a second. And here are some examples of podcasts, just so you know. There's a podcast called 10% Happier with Dan Harris. 10% Happier. I love that name, by the way, because it's like anyone could maybe muster 10% more well-being, right? I don't know if we can all be 100% happier, but 10%, I love it. But here's what I love about it. Dan Harris is not a dude who has a degree in positive psychology. He's actually a dude who talks about how he had a panic attack on national TV because he was an anchor at ABC News and he literally had a panic attack. He had a cut to commercial. And so he went on an exploration of like, how can I find a way to calm the heck down? And he looked into like meditation and all kinds of things. And so here he is taking people on this journey and it's not a look at me journey. I want you to get this too. It's not a look at me journey. It's a come with me journey. And I feel like that's the journey I'm always on. Like, come with me, like, let's figure it out, right? I want you guys to get that, that the thing that most people want more than anything is to feel less alone. So if somebody is like, here I am with all the answers, it's like, okay, like you can kind of hang on and listen for like a minute, but there's something about that that really doesn't actually feel awesome. It feels really cool when someone's like, hey, I get you. Like, I've, I've been there. I am there. Like, let's together sort of look into how we could figure this out. And I think that that's something that you can provide for other people. And I think that really that's one of the single things that's missing so much in this world. And I'm like that on my show, for sure. Like, my show is called Don't Keep Your Day Job. So it's all about not having day jobs, but having dream jobs. And I and I'm the kind of person who, when I'm talking about how to live a life that's more of a dream and more successful and how to be a great entrepreneur, I'm not like, hi, I have it all together. I eat avocado toast. It's gorgeous. Look at it. And look at my kids in their perfectly flat outfits. And my husband and I have sex every day. And we're always perfect. Like, no, like, I'm like, here's all the ways that I'm living the question with you. And here's all the things. And I think one of the biggest things here is like letting go of shame that like you're a person who is, yeah, you have parts of you that are gorgeous, parts of you that self-sabotage, right? Does anyone in here do that? Anyone in here have any parts of you that feel like scared or broken? Yeah, we all have that. But I think when you embrace that, one of my teachers used to say, when you have coffee every morning, invite all the parts of you to join you, the parts of you that, you know, are brave, the parts that get in your own way. And it's beautiful, right? So I think that this is something we need to get. Well, what are other podcasts about? There's podcasts about, there's a podcast called Flipping Junkie, you know, about the flip life. Like people are into that. There's a podcast called Creative Dog Trading. My friend Katya is here. Maybe she would like it. She loves dogs. There's a podcast called The Secret Life of Cookies. There's a podcast called Too Old for TikTok. There's a podcast called Organic Gardening Podcast. There's a podcast called The Curtain Call Theater Podcast. There's a podcast called Downtime, the mountain biking podcast. So what are you getting about what I'm saying? Let's talk about what are the key elements. Here we go. More content here for you today. What are the key elements to choosing a topic for your show? What does it come down to? We just talked about cookies and gardening and mountain biking and TikTok and right. What are the key elements? Number one. This is something that you have passion around. This is something you're passionate about. You love cooking, you love gardening, you love dogs, you love Bruce Springsteen, great. Do you know I took three years of classes at UCLA's Mindful Awareness Research Center, which is just so cool because you get to learn about all this research about how the brain works and boy, could I use a little mindfulness in my life. Again, come with me journey, not look at me, definitely not. But one of the things that we learned, <clears throat> Colleen, which is really fascinating, is they asked us the question, what do you think lights up strongest in the brain? <clears throat> like what emotion or what feeling? And everyone's like love or lust or hate or anger. And none of those were the answer. The answer was, who's gonna guess? What do you think lights up strongest in the brain? I already told you it's not love and it's not hate. What do you think it is? What do you think lights up strongest in the human brain? What feeling? One emotion. Yeah, Julie got it. Yep, Maren got it. 
The answer is enthusiasm, actually. Enthusiasm. You ever have an experience where you're like having dinner with a group of people and somebody is just so enthusiastic about mountain biking. Next thing you know, you're like, I'm gonna get a bike. And then your husband's like, no, 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 no. Like, you really shouldn't. You're gonna danger yourself. And you're like, no, but he's so excited. But like, somebody starts talking about like, ayahuasca and you're like, what's this? You, you, you go to Costa Rica and then you throw up, but you have this amazing, like this, I've had that, and that I haven't done, but I, people get excited, really excited, right? Enthusiasm is infectious. It is more contagious than COVID. That's a true statement. That's based on scientific data, enthusiasm. So something you're passionate about, such a pleasure to listen when someone's just excited about something. And it doesn't matter if you're just really into like, Velcro, these new shoes you just got, you like can't wait for someone else to try them. The second thing is something that you have something to say about. And it, again, let's not confuse what I'm saying for what I'm not saying. Not that you have an expertise, but that you have a story about this. And maybe you have knowledge around it. There's nothing wrong with that. You could, but just something you have something to say about, something you could tell stories about. And then here's the other thing. It scratches an itch, right? Not just for other people, but for you. Like what is something that other people might also be interested in, but you're also interested in it. Meaning if time and money was no object, what are the kinds of topics that you're like, yeah, I could literally, my husband said this the other day. He's like, I could sit and talk about comedy and stand up comics and the history of comedy forever because comedy really saved him. Like when his father passed, he would stay up in fourth grade and watch like The Tonight Show and Sid Caesar. And so he loves Rodney Dangerfield and Jackie Mason and now all the new guys with like, you know, Bill Burr and everything. Like he knows where they started, how they came up. He could talk about it forever. I know other people who could talk about baseball forever. I have, he has like two best friends who like, they're obsessed with it. They love it. And I actually started loving it because of the way that they love it, because of the game, because of the players, because of their connection to certain stadiums. You're like, I think I'm a Cubs fan. I'm like, I've never even lived in Chicago, but it's interesting when other people are interested in certain topics. So I want you to start thinking about that. In fact, maybe you want to write that right now in the chat. Like you could, by the way, pivot 14 times. You could pivot three times, even just during this, this, this boot camp. But what right now do you think, based upon those questions I just said, what passion and what's your what's your passion? Do you have something to say about certain things? What's what scratches like that itch? What might you talk about? So Catherine said the relationship between art and mental health is your passion. I think that's so beautiful. Um, what else? Cooking and wellness, Misha just said. Very cool. Food and wine, very nice inner child work. Yeah. So cool. Well, I'm telling you that what is personal is universal. And there's a line in the Talmud that says that words from the heart speak to the heart. And I recently had Gary Zukoff on my podcast, who was on Oprah. I think he's the most guested. I don't know how to say he's been on Oprah the most of anyone. And he said that we know there's something in the world called cause and effect, but he said that what he's noticed is that cause doesn't create the effect. It's the intention that creates the effect. And I do think that there's something to that, right? Like I always think about when people speak from the heart, I think about like Dr. King, I think about his famous speech, I have a dream. And I think about the vulnerability and the all in nature of how he spoke fully and I think when, when people hear another human being speaking and they're right in it, all in, open heart, I think it's like immediate, it goes in, you, you absorb it. And so I think that that intention is more important than you being perfect or you having a script, right? Even right now, like I don't have a script but I really care about this topic. I really want you to get to start your own show. And I just trust that like, we're gonna have a connect. We're gonna, we're gonna find a way. Colleen, is there anything else you wanna say about these elements? Yeah, I just want you to really give yourself permission to go with where your heart is because sometimes the people around us, as much as they love us and they're extraordinary and amazing, they kind of look at you like, 
you're going to start a podcast on like what? <laughs> because they see us stepping into, yeah. you know, our possibility. And sometimes it makes them feel a little uncomfortable or uncertain. And so truly, truly give yourself that space to listen to that whisper and that voice inside you. That's like, I just love this and it's random, but I want to talk about it and go totally. for it. Yeah, totally. You're reminding me of my friend, Danielle, who she might pop in at some point in this launch. I'm not sure yet. I think she will. But one of my friends, Danielle Silverstein, she has a podcast called Marriage and Martinis. And Colleen, everyone told her not to start that podcast. You know why? Because, and this is a, a story that's public. Otherwise, I would not share it. She actually shares this on her podcast. Um, so she and her husband, Adam, were basically on the verge of a divorce. And things were so hard. Like all these skeletons had come right out of the closet. There were so many pieces of things. And she was a listener of my podcast. That's how I met her. And she DM me and she said, we're in such a hard spot, but I heard you saying, make the messy version, just start. You never know what could happen. She said, I turned to Adam and said, we're all, we're already at this lowest point. What if we started a podcast where we talked about what's going on in our home? Maybe that would help. And he was like, oh my God, that's going to be so expo exposing and whatever. And her parents and her kids were like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Do you guys know what happened when she was looking for podcasts that maybe could help her? She couldn't find any because the podcasts on marriage were all like, here's how you have a great marriage. Here's what you do. Here's what you don't do. And what did it do? it made her feel worse, right? It made her feel worse. And then when she and Adam started, guess what they did? They said, fine, let's just do this. They sat down in the middle of their kitchen, their kids running around, doors banging, whatever. And they just had real conversations. And what happened is that people listening said, oh my God, that, that makes me feel less alone. And then they started to be able to have real conversations. They really listened to each other. Their marriage improved. They helped thousands of people. And over like the course of six months, it grew to 300,000 downloads. They were then written about in the New York Post. They then got a million downloads, then 2 million downloads. They've now built a multi six figure income from that by just creating eBooks and things that can help people to talk about real things with their spouse. And these are not experts. These are people, and guess what? Their marriage is so much more improved. So I think that you have to get that we've been shown it's a it's a lie this like you have to be perfect is a lie this you know no one's going to listen to you unless you're an expert it's a lie and the the bottom line is how many people by the end of today could you impact simply being your messy real self the answer is probably more than you can even fathom and i feel like that's so it's so rewarding because I do think that the thing that we all want is to feel that we're making an impact and also to feel seen and to feel expressed. And so I highly, highly recommend that you just start to reframe the way you've been thinking about these things because I can show you the evidence that you don't need to be Beyonce. Like here I am, I fly totally under the radar. You know, just recently we were at Alfred Coffee and this woman's like, I, I, I know you from your podcast, but that hardly ever happens. And meanwhile, I'm like quietly impacting, you know, millions of people and I get to be myself. I have a very short commute. I just come downstairs and I didn't have to be perfect first. I didn't have to get a PhD in being perfect first. I got to just be a person who said, hey, here's my arm. I'm going to reach out to you and maybe together we can find our way. Colleen, do you have anything you, you want to say about that? Yeah, I think... I want you all to remember as well, when you are starting to kind of look out there at these different podcasts, and you might find ones that are like on your topic, please remember there is room for everyone. It doesn't matter if there is like 50 podcasts all on say the organic gardening topic. And you think, oh, there's no point in me doing that because there's already 49 other ones out there. And I would, who, who's going to listen to me? I promise you, your stories, your magic, your personality, all of that is going to make your show different than other shows on the same topic. So truly no limitations as you feel into this and you choose your path, let it be what you're being called to be. Yeah, 
And even just like that, you see, I had to get up because somebody was knocking at the door and it's okay. Like instead of sweating, but someone's going to knock, it's like, you're just people you can handle that. I had to get up and open the door and Colleen knew I was like, I texted this person for the delivery. Please don't knock. But of course, knocking, knocking. Does it throw me off? Not as much as it would if I was like, I could never get up. I'm the, I have to be, I have to not be a human. I have to be, it's like, no, I was interviewing Rob Lowe a year ago and my four-year-old comes in. She goes, mommy, wipe me. I have to poop. Now, why did that happen? Because it was a global pandemic and my kids were not in school and my sweet, sweet husband was supposed to be watching them, but instead he was upstairs. So that happened. Yes, it was so great. But guess what? It's okay. <laughs> it's really okay. Like we actually laughed about it. And I'm even telling it to you right now. If we could let go of shame, what could we do? How much could we accomplish if we could let go of shame? How much could we accomplish if we got to just be who we actually are instead of having this exhausting pressure to be someone that we think other people need us to be? So how do you uncover your topic? Well, one of the things is, like I said, if time and money were no object, what would you talk about? What about something you're really enthusiastic about? Like, I'm serious. We just talked about it. And I know that you're going to think, well, no one's that excited about Lisa Frank. Remember Lisa Frank? She made all those stickers in the 80s. I don't know, Colleen, if you had the exact same stuff that we had because we come from different parts of the world. But Lisa Frank, pretty cool. Yeah, you know what? If you love Lisa Frank and everything 80s and neon and leg warmers and whatever, gem, truly, truly outrageous, I can bet you that there is another group of people who are obsessed with speak and spell. I was just telling my kids about what a speak and spell is. I'm like, you know how you guys like use mommy's phone and you have an iPad and you have a pencil for your iPad. We had something that said, A, A, B, you are correct. You are right. You are right. We're like, oh my God, it talks. Like there are people who are obsessed with 80s things, right? There are people who are obsessed with, I don't know, all those shows like Silver Spoons and Growing Pains. If you're excited about it, you will find your people. Okay, what else? What about something you've been through? Something you've been through. What if you are a mom who decided you couldn't breastfeed for whatever reason, you didn't want to, you couldn't make the milk production happen. Maybe that's a podcast, right? For women who also are like, finally someone who says the thing I need to hear. What else? What else have you been through? Maybe you were somebody who has dyslexia and school was challenging. And so you create a podcast for people like that. My friend Jim Quick has a podcast, which is so good. And it's all about how he grew up and he wasn't considered the smartest kid in school. And that was so detrimental. And what else could you talk about, right? I mean, think of it. Think of things that you can talk about. How much do people love Rachel Ray? It's like, and here's the other thing. You're going to say to me, yeah, well, Kathy, there's already a thousand cooking podcasts. Like, and did that stop Ina Garten and all these, like, so what? Like, how many fashion designers are there? You know, how many, by the way, have you ever noticed how it's almost comical how many people make jeans now? It's like, when I was growing up, you would have like Levi's or you go to the Gap, right? Now it's like rag and bone, all, you know, sevens, citizens for humanity, J Joe's, like, does this one say like, oh, no, 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 I can't make a jean line because it's like, how different are they? Well, the branding is different, right? There's nuances that make things different. I mean, how many shows already existed about entrepreneurship and dream jobs when I started? Thousands, thousands and thousands, but, you know how you get off the bus at sleepaway camp and there's a bunch of kids there and roughly speaking, they're all kind of similar. They're all kind of the same age. Maybe they come from the same like four towns, right? Or whatever it is, but you find your people, right? You don't, you're not best friends with everyone. You're like, no, just like Joni and Melissa, like those are my girls, right? Why? Because there is still a way that you find intimacy and you can't find that intimacy with every person. And so it's beautiful that there's already other podcasts, but I'll tell you something else about podcasts that you might not know. People who listen to podcasts tend to listen to other people's podcasts. So actually, if somebody already likes listening to a gardening podcast, the, the data says that they're more likely to choose six other gardening podcasts to listen to. Is that crazy? All right. 
Um, and then another way to find your topic is like what pain, maybe what pain bothers you the most in the world? Like, do you care about animal rights and you really want to talk about it? Or do you care about single mothers and you really want to help them and talk, whatever. Those are really important things. Okay. Moving right along. I feel like the Muppets moving right along. Bum, 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 bum. So show format. Let's talk about the show format. Cause sometimes people say, well, Kath, I can't start a podcast cause I can't talk for an hour. Okay. Who says you have to talk for an hour? There's many ways that you can do a podcast. My friend, Chris Gillibo does a podcast that's between five and 15 minutes. Can you talk about something for five or 15 minutes? I bet you can. Let me talk about the formats, okay? So your show can be, your episode can be five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, anything goes. That's number one. Number two, you 100% can find time in the week to record especially when you're not trying to be perfect, especially if you choose a format that works for you. You could do one episode a week or you could do multiple. So what, what might this look like? These are some styles, just so you guys are aware, and you can tell me which one you think might be for you. These are some styles of the way you can record your episode. You could tell stories. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. You could give guidance and tips. You could share other people's journey or your journey, or you could do interviews with either regular people or famous people or experts with a big capital E or experts with a small E, like a local therapist or a really famous therapist. Those are all the different ways that I know of. Which one feels the best to you? And let me give you an example. So I mentioned my friend, Chris Gillibo, his podcast is called Side Hustle School. So he actually does a podcast every day, Colleen. He does a podcast 365, 365 days a year. How does he do that? Because he doesn't do an interview every single day. Like that would be probably pretty difficult, right? To schedule an interview and edit it and find the schedules both correct for both of you. So what does he do? Every single day, he tells a story about a person who started a side hustle. So he might tell the story, which I love, of Teresa Greenway. This is a great story. He told, I, heard, I learned this from him. Teresa Greenway was a woman who was cleaning in a motel. And she had two little kids. And her daughter said, mom, you know, we need more resources because her brother had some special needs. And she said, you've got to find a way. We've got to find a way to make more money. And she said, well, I don't have any other skills. And uh, the same story, right? Like, you know, it's amazing is that people can tell you 99 reasons why the answer is just no, and it's all a dead end. But then someone can come along and show you one reason why you can find more expansion and your whole life changes. So her daughter, God bless her, kept saying, no, mom, we have to find a way and we can. And she said to her, you know what you're really good at, mom? You're really good at making sourdough bread. And she's like, so? And she said, you should teach that. You should teach people how to make sourdough bread. Well, would you believe that her daughter took her phone and recorded her mom teaching sourdough bread in the kitchen. And they put that class up on Udemy and they made $85,000. And then it did so well that they wound up doing extreme sourdough, advanced sourdough, different kinds of sourdough. She was able to leave her job cleaning motels and they were able to make a few hundred thousand dollars. It was a side hustle. I learned that from Chris Gillibo. Now, did Chris interview Teresa? No, he just told that story. Doesn't that story inspire you? Did you actually need to meet her to feel inspired? You just need to hear about her to feel, no. Would you be even more inspired if you heard from her? Probably yes, but is that a reason to not do this show because he can't get an interview with all of these people every day? No, that would be a waste actually. The stories themselves are powerful. So every day, 365 days a year, Chris Gillibo, who's actually a very like, I would say soft-spoken, more of an introverted guy, tells a story about someone who started a side hustle. And what do you think that does for his listeners? It does everything for them because what do people need? They need possibility. They need to see evidence that these things can happen. So what if you did that? What if you told a story every time you do your show? And do you have to do a show every day? No, Chris does a show every day. You could do a show once a week, couldn't you? And tell a story about something. Of course you could. Well, what else could you do? You could do interviews. Now people will turn to me and say, Kath, I could do interviews, but you interviewed Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, and peace. Like, let me just also tell you this piece. I almost passed out, by the way. Like he is the hottest person 
if I'm going to be honest, like he's the person I've had many fantasies about, like it was not okay. It was impossible. Okay, great. I got on there and he was like, Hey, what's up? And I was like, what's up? I am not breathing. And I literally said to him, I'm not able to breathe so well, but as long as I can just call that out, we could probably proceed. And he was laughing so hard, but people will say to me, well, I can do interviews, but I can't get a celebrity. I'm like, do you think I could get a celebrity four and a half years ago? No, that wasn't happening. Go look at my first hundred episodes. You think I had celebrities? I didn't, but here's the thing that's going to be surprising to you. Our most downloaded episodes, even to date, even once I've had like fancy people on like the Property Brothers and Harry Connick Jr. and whoever. Do you think those are our most downloaded episodes? Yes or no? What do you think? Yeah, so I'm leading the witness, obviously. But the answer is no. Our most downloaded episodes are the episodes when I just talk from my heart. In fact, I, um, I had a really sad situation. It was like a miscarriage and it was very late in my pregnancy and it was really sad. The baby had terminal illness. I wasn't even going to talk about it. It was so painful for me. And Colleen, it has nothing to do with my show topic. And I was like, oh God, I'm just going to skip this week and you know, we'll play something else. And for some reason I said to Emma, who's now been my producer this entire time, I said, let me just hit record and, and then I'll decide if I want to um, share the episode. And you guys, I I hit record and I, I, I broke down during the episode talking about having to go to the hospital. And it's very, very painful. Anyone who's been through it. But would you believe that that's one of our most downloaded episodes? And it was just a girl telling my very unpleasant story. Um, but people wrote to me who've had all kinds of things happen in their life. And they were like, that was everything for me. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so grateful. I felt like it gave this little baby soul like a legacy because I was afraid to do it. And then it gave meaning that this little, this little life actually, it, it wound up helping other people. And I thought you gave my little baby boy like this gift. So it was really beautiful, but I don't think people would assume that. I think we live in a culture that teaches you these lies, like you know what's the most important thing? How famous you are, how fancy you are, how good you look. But guess who's on the other end of receiving this content? People. And what do they have? They have a heart. And they actually connect to things that make them feel connected to something. So that was one of our most downloaded episodes. You know what else? We had my friend Saul Blinkoff on early on, who is an animator. And you know, my whole show is about being an entrepreneur and building your own dream job. But I had him on because in the beginning you have on who you can have on. And he's a great storyteller. And he told a story about how when he was a little kid, he like went and saw the little mermaid and he said to his mom, like, that's what I want to do. And they flew down to Disney world and they tried to find the offices of the animators and how could he get into art school and who are the art schools they recruit from and how he got rejected and rejected. And he finally got in and he blasted circle life and it moves us all and he loves the movie Rudy and he talked about how like he was going to give up but he saw the movie and he's like no I'm going to apply again and he kept applying and he kept getting rejected and he finally got in to work at Disney and now he's been directing and animating all these movies like Mulan and Tarzan it was an amazing episode and is he Howard Schultz no we had Howard Schultz on he's awesome by the way Howard Schultz is incredible but that episode with Saul got more downloads than the man who started Starbucks. But um, bum take that one to the bank. Take that one to the bank. Like, this is something you need to get, right? And you were saying Rudy, Rudy, but like, that's why actually we love the story of Rudy. Like, that's why we love that movie because we relate to Sean Astin. We relate to that person. So maybe you could be that person for somebody else. What do you think? So tell me just spitballing here. If you were going to do a podcast, what do you think you would want to do as your format? 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Would you want to tell stories, do interviews, right? Doesn't have to be famous people. What are you guys feeling? I love one of you just said, and you can sing. And I'm like, do you know what my favorite part of being a mother is? When I get to sing and my girls actually let me sing. And I'm like, I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, no end. So thank you for indulging me. 
it's the funnest thing because I don't get to sing ever. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. But now, you want to sing with me? Sing with me. Oh, P.S. I came out to LA because I wanted to get a record deal. And I got dropped from a label. I got dropped from Interscope. And then I went and had a bunch of day jobs. And then I started a podcast. And do you get what a gift it is that you can find other ways to use your voice? But guess what? I don't sing on my podcast, but I get to use my voice. So sometimes it turns out that we have a bigger mission than we think. All right. P.S. We're trying to get Alan Menken on the podcast soon. So stay tuned. I'm like more excited about Alan Menken than Matthew McConaughey. All right. Now let's talk about gear. A lot of you are like, I would start a podcast, but oh, all the things, right? All the things. So you don't need to make it all the things. All right. You can buy a microphone on Amazon. There's so many now, right? You can buy a microphone for $45, $55. It doesn't have to be forever. Okay. And then you could get headphones. <laughs> I'm not even using headphones right now. And you can use Zoom. Before the pandemic, I was using Zoom. P.S. Colleen, you don't know this. I told my husband immediately during the pandemic, like buy stock in Zoom. He's like, Zoom, never heard of it. I'm like, three, I go buy stock. Three months later, I go, how'd the Zoom stock go? He goes, I didn't buy it. I'm like, I'm going to pretend that I don't know you. I'm going to walk out of the room silently. And then I'm going to slam the door. And then I'm not talking to you for the end of the day. <laughs> I was like, you idiot. Like I told you, because I was using Zoom to record podcasts for four and a half years. So when the pandemic came, I was like, we've been Zooming all the time, but oh my God, everyone's Zooming. So you know how to use Zoom, right? You use Zoom and then you know what happens? Your file goes into your Dropbox. You can use Dropbox or something else. And then you have now video and audio. Do you have to use the video? No, you can just use the audio, but it can't, it can literally be that simple. Here's another thing. To this day, I pick up my phone. This is, this is me and a phone. That's what that was. To this day, when I record the intro, I'm like, hey, it's Kathy Heller. How's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Don't Keep Your Day Job. Um, I record it on my phone into the voice notes that comes as a native app on my phone. And then I just use that and put that in the file. It's really not hard. And you know how it seems hard to edit a reel? I don't know if any of you have ever done a reel for Instagram or TikTok. You're like, it's so hard. I can't possibly. Let me do it. And like five seconds, you're like, I'm a real pro. Let me add it. Make every reel every day. Like, it's not that hard. That's actually how hard it is to edit your podcast. And then when it comes to music, there are so many sites where you can get music for like 50 bucks that you can license. Or sometimes there's free music where you can find like, P.S. Can I tell you another amazing P.S.? We're going to wrap up in like five minutes. I'm obsessed with Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay. At my wedding, I wanted to walk down the aisle to the, da -da, da -da, da -da. it's the theme for Curb. I was looking into it. You want to, God bless Larry David. Do you want to know the truth? That song, that song, that's the theme song for Curb Your Enthusiasm is a free track that he found online that you can license. Colleen, are you hearing this? Are you getting this? How insane is that? What I'm saying is Larry freaking David, who created Seinfeld, I think he has like $17 billion. He was like, nah, we don't need to hire a composer, Danny Elfman, Hans Zimmer. No, no, what's this? What you got on the free uh, licensable, which is so perfect because it's really the, the it, it's the whole tone of the show. It's like, we don't really care, whatever. It's perfect. Well, you too can find a track like that and use it now. You don't have to pick something like that. There's all kinds of tracks. You could spend 20 bucks. You could spend $0. And then I am telling you that when you get into whatever you're going to use, you can use GarageBand. It, it literally, it's something that we can talk about more, answer more questions about on Friday, actually. On Friday, when we're on Zoom, I can have my producer on and she can kind of like tell you a little bit more and go into detail. But really, you just need Zoom, your phone if you want <laughs> to do voice notes, um, and you could buy a microphone on Amazon, and you're off to the races. Who wants to take a big sigh of relief from that? <sighs> okay, so let me tell you what's going to happen now, okay? I know. Now it's time to say goodbye to all our company. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-U-C. 
uh, it's the, it's the end of day one. It's the end. Um, by the way, how many of you watched the Mickey Mouse Club growing up and knew that they had a band? Okay, we'll get into that later. So it's the end of day one, but it is not the end of this challenge. First of all, show me with a one. If you've enjoyed yourself today, let me see it because I had the best time. This was really fun. So tomorrow we're going to go into more stuff. We're going to talk about how do you build an audience, right? What are all of the strategies? What are all the ways so that you don't just have four listeners? You turn those four listeners into 4,000 listeners and 40,000 listeners. So who's excited about that? We're going to talk about that tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we're going to talk about monetizing. And guess what? We're going to give you homework every day, okay? But it's going to be easy homework. We're going to post it in the Facebook thread later today, meaning like in five minutes or 10 minutes after I get off this call. And for those of you who do your homework, and it's really, really easy, we're going to ask you simple questions in your homework like, why are you excited to start a podcast? What are three elements that we talked about that could be part of what helps you pick your topic? What kind of show format, right? Just stuff that's based on what we talked about today. But guess what? We are going to put you in a raffle if you do your homework and we're going to pick three of you who do the homework and guess what we're going to give away? Beats headphones, really cool ones, and a Yeti microphone to three of you just for doing your homework, just for participating, okay? Um, so then come back tomorrow. We are going to be here same time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Uh, in the PST. And you guys, I'm telling you that you're going to want to be back for tomorrow and the next day because it's one thing I think a lot of people, I do, I think a lot of people teach like how to start a podcast and like stuff like this. But I don't know that everybody really gets the super glue of how to build an engaged audience, not just an audience of fans, but super fans. So we're going to talk a lot about that tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we're going to talk about the five different ways that you can turn that into a profit and you're going to, your, your hair is going to blow back. Like the, I didn't, I don't I'll just give you a teaser. The average podcaster salary average is 87,000. That's data. You can Google that. We're going to talk about that. That's the average. So we're going to talk about how can this be something that takes an hour or so of your week as a side hustle, something is fun, something that's rewarding, something that could help other people and make you an incredible living. We're going to talk about that on Wednesday. This is going to be such an amazing challenge. I'm so happy that you guys are here. I'm going to sign off now. Please do your homework. And before I sign off, the last thing I want you to know is we do have mentors. We do have mentors for you here. And if you haven't connected yet with your mentor, type the word mentor in the comments here because you each have been assigned someone who's on my team, who's worked with me for years, who I love, who can be here with you to unpack this homework, right? You might want to do this homework and then say to Leslie or to Beth or to, to me, um, what do you think? Like, what do you think of this topic? Or what do you think of this format? So type the word mentor if you want to be connected with your mentor. And also we have a podcasting guide. It's like a PDF. And if you want to download that, if you just type the word PDF, we'll be making sure that we send you the link. So you can type the word mentor if you want to connect with your mentor as you go through this challenge. You can type the word PDF if you would like the PDF as well. I'll be back tomorrow. Colleen, how are you feeling? Oh, it's amazing. I'm so excited for this week, you guys. Life change and stuff. It's really been the best. Do you see how it's hard for me to get off because I like them so much? I really like you. I like you. I like you. I really like, I feel like Sally Fields, but it's the opposite. Anyway, so much fun today. We're coming back. Who's coming back tomorrow? Who's going to be with us? And yes, we will be sending out the replays, but you guys coming here live is a whole nother vibe. It's a whole nother vibe. And if you had fun today, tell your friends, be like, come on in. And if you want to connect PS, you could take a screenshot right now of me and Colleen, and you could post in your Instagram stories, like I'm cat part of Kathy Heller, and then tag me at Kathy.Heller on Instagram. So I can see you in my DMs. I can reshare those. We can say hello. We can become friends. Slide on into my DMs by posting about this in your stories. Tell people, this is interesting. You might like it or tell somebody something that you learned today. Hope you guys have an amazing day. I'll be back with you tomorrow.